Hello there beautiful collective and welcome to today's pick a card reading with me the high maintenance hippie and in today's reading I want to find out some information around your next intimate encounter so I want to find out who this encounter is going to be with the where's the how's and I also want to find out some juicy details as to what's actually going to happen within this intimate encounter so this is an 18 plus reading today but I do need to keep it as tame as possible for YT so I may have to dance around some of the things that come up within this reading but either way it's going to be interesting and if you want to join me in this reading and find out some information around your next intimate encounter, I need you to pick one of these three piles. I highly recommend that you go with your first gut instinct. Spirit is going to guide you towards the pile which has the most relevant information for you. And once you've chosen your pile, I shall see you in your reading. Hey there gorgeous pile number one, welcome to your reading. Let's find out some information around your next intimate encounter. And as I said in the intro to this reading, this is an 18 plus reading, but I am keeping it as clean and as tame as possible. So I may need to really dance around some of the things that come up within this reading. But either way, it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be informative. So let's get into it. So you guys chose this beautiful card here with the lady with the green hair. Now, this green could talk about you grounding at the moment, you being in an energy where you feel like you're stabilising yourself, grounding yourself. Some of you may have very heavy earth in your charts. You may have an earth sun, moon or rising. I'm feeling earth moon coming in very, very strongly here. Bear in mind, for those of you watching who don't have an earth moon, perfectly fine. You just may be in a very earthy kind of energy when it comes to your emotions you may be trying to ground your emotions at the moment now I feel two camps with my palm number ones I feel that my palm number ones have been through some trauma around relationships maybe being let down within relationships um, having your boundaries crossed not being able to trust within relationships and the same within se actual connections and relationships as well so I feel my palm number ones are dealing with some trauma and potentially trying to close up some open wounds around relationships and SEX right now. Now where the two camps come in is I feel that some of you may be really holding down these emotions that want to come out and want to be expressed. Therefore, potentially you guys aren't feeling very comfortable around connections which force you to be or encourage you to be vulnerable so you may be avoidant of healthy relationships or people that actually you know could be really quite good for you because of this and honestly i think this could be a subconscious thing okay if you're holding down those emotions you're not working through those um, traumas and those wounds and things like that you may not realize that you're bypassing the healthy people it just may be a very subconscious action that you're doing at the moment so again won't be for all of you partner ones but maybe that'll resonate for some of you and then we've got the other camp where you are aware of your wounds you know that you have um things to work through when it comes to relationships trust and sex and you may be feeling like you're not in the right mind space or in the right place for an intimate relationship or an intimate encounter Whatever camp you fall in, partner one, spirit is coming in to say this is going to come in at a time where you don't think it is the right time. And this is going to come in, and I, honestly, I really, really like this energy, part number one. This is going to come in as a supportive healing energy for you because, of course, when it comes to your wounds and things like that, you do need to put the work in actively yourself to heal yourself. But this person is going to be a lovely support to kind of progress and accelerate that healing. Now, I don't see this person coming in triggering you and making all these wounds come to the surface and forcing you to work through them. I see it being a lot more gentle. This person coming in, doing the right thing, saying the right things, being a very strong supportive system for you and helping you have trust in another person again giving you the space to express, giving you the space to make mistakes because you are working through your wounds, giving you the space to work through some of your own toxic programming, okay? Because we all have it, we all have it. This is somebody who's very understanding, is what I wanna say, very mature, very understanding. 
Okay, so for some of you, this may be somebody that you know through work and I'm feeling boss energy. Now, for those of you who don't know this person through work, this person could just naturally be a boss, own their own business, um, or be somebody who's very well known, okay? So for some of you, this could be somebody who is in the public eye, well known within your community, or you guys could meet through something to do with the community, okay? But I do feel this person, I actually feel this person is um, either very well off or has the potential to be very well off. And I'm just thinking, what's this Libra here? This Libra energy. Something around this person being a little bit too perfect. And maybe this scares you at first when this person comes into your life. And for some of you, this person may already be in your life. You may be interacting with this person already. You may be dating this person already. Um, or you may be viewing this person from afar and they seem too perfect. Now, I want to say there's something around their appearance where they're put together very, very well. Like, they may dress very well. They may be somebody who's got very smooth skin. I'm just thinking about... Um, and this can be a female or a masculine, but I'm just thinking about masculines who have facials and have their nails done and things like that. And I've met masculines like this before when I was um, when I was dating, and I was going for men who were a little bit older than me. You know, quite quite a little bit older than me. I went through a little phase where I thought, you know what, I'm looking for a daddy. <laughs> um, so there was a particular age range that would keep coming in for me, and I'd find that these men who are like, I say significantly older than me, not significant, but fairly older than me, um, 10 years plus older than me, maybe even 16 years older, do you know what I mean, things like that, okay, um, <clears throat> I'd find that these men would have better skin than me, smoother skin than me, more radiant skin than me, and I'm like, this is not on, <laughs> what is going on here, but they look after themselves, they get facials, they have, um, you know, they wear expensive skincare and things like this, so, this person could have like a very like perfect appearance. Now for some of you, this person may be older than you, all right? So maybe that's came up, me talking about the older men for me, maybe come up for you because this person could be significantly older than you, 10 years plus older than you, but it doesn't have to be. It could just be that this person maybe is a little bit further along in life for some of you, okay? This could be, um, you know, as I said, like a boss energy where they've done very well for themselves at a young age and things like that okay so it'll be different for everybody but there's like a maturity a boss kind of energy coming through and kind of like a wise elder energy coming through with this person as well but yeah the hair may be perfect too they may like to make sure that their hair is perfect they may dress very very well and again they just give off this air of like intimidation but i think the intimidation comes from how perfected they are and i think they're very very careful when it comes to their communication and what they say very well articulated highly highly charming this is somebody who i feel has it all and i want to say here with this person they may have found luck in their darkest times they may have found abundance through their toughest challenges this is something that's coming through with this person and this is ringing a bit of a bell because i feel like somebody very similar to this has came through in a previous reading can't tell you which one but it literally could have been like 10 readings ago so that could have been like 10 weeks ago but i'm feeling this energy like a bit of deja vu around this particular energy here but this person you know they've been to the bottom and they built their way to the top they could have if they were born wealthy they could have lost everything and regained it okay there's a little bit of energy here around gaming things, losing things, da 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 Okay. And I feel like this is why this person understands your current energy. The fact that you're working through some difficult times yourself. You're healing wounds yourself. You're trying to find the light in a dark situation at the moment yourself. And this is why this comes in at the right time. Because this person has an understanding when it comes to your feelings and this person has support and like even like advice that they can give i'm just like seeing them as like a crutch like you know like the crutches when you break your leg or whatever um and this person like being like a crutch for you so 
interesting and I just heard spirit say and let them be a crutch because I could be speaking to a couple of people here part number one where you're like no I've got this I have got this I can do this on my own the only person I can trust is me I'm hearing like a Destiny's Child lyric coming in it's like me myself and I is all I got in the end that's what I found out okay but um spirit is trying to say look okay allow this person to come in allow it now this person could also have a child which also makes them um, very understanding as well <laughs> i'm actually getting like understanding to your like behavior <laughs> now i don't mean this like in a negative way part number one but maybe some of you are a little bit sassy a little bit defensive because if you have been wounded in the past i know like i can totally resonate with this and i'm an aries on top of it so i can be a little bitch when i want to be but i'm feeling that kind of energy with you where you guys can be a bit sassy a little bit kind of like defensive a little bit Deaverish is what I'm getting as well and this person gets it because they have to deal with this with their child so they, just, they see it as innocent and cute and um, they understand that it's coming from frustration and you needing to defend yourself so this person isn't going to fight fire with fire like this person could actually they, I do have fire energy on their end and I have water energy on your end but I'm feeling earth energy with you I'm feeling some water and fire energy with them could be earth and water with you maybe maybe very prominent in your chart maybe it's fire and water for them but it could just be a mix of everything um <laughs> yes so I feel that this person approaches you and when this person approaches you they very instantly kind of hit you in the feels i do sense that you magnetize this person in now this person does initially enter through their hormones a rush of hormones because they find you very very physically attractive now i've got cards down here that are turned over just because they're a little bit rude and um, <clears throat> I can't even show the back of these two cards here because um, even the backs are quite rude and I don't want to take any chances. But there's something coming through around your chest area with this person. They, do you know what? They're somebody who is very independent themselves, but they really want someone to just look after them. I think they're looking for that maternal figure. I don't know whether they're looking for a maternal, caring, loving figure because they have a child and they're a single parent or whether they just really would like to take some of the pressure off them and they just want a safe place to go and that safe place being you. They've had a stressful day at work. They just want to come back to you and just feel um, embraced and safe and secure and peaceful peaceful is coming through very very strongly here you know this person sees you as their peace now i don't know whether you've got a lot of harmonious aspects in your sinistry chart which just complement each other which naturally brings this air of safety now i do also want to bring in that it could be you with the child if it's not them with the child because there is a child in between you both here so i have said that they could be the parent but i really should have said the other way around as well okay this is a collective reading it could be you who's the parent too and you've got a lot of expectations for what you want out of a relationship a connection due to having a child not only having to think about yourself but having to think about the child as well okay i see you kind of um I want to say like I can just see like a dog and you training a dog so you could be like um I'm not training this person because I don't think this person is in a position of their life where they need training but there's something around you testing this person making this person jump through hoops for you um and this is like further on the future now this pile we've got a connection here we've got a long-term connection so we've got this intimate encounter leading to a long-term connection for you and that's why i'm going very deep with you guys in this section of who this person is and how you guys meet but let's move on to the encounter let's see what we've got okay it is a bit annoying when i've got to turn these cards around so the encounter oh, do you know what your next intimate encounter is going to be
be an encounter where you're kind of swept off your feet or it's a long time coming. So this could be somebody that you felt feelings for, vice versa as well, they, or you both felt feelings for each other for quite a while and you kind of don't know whether this is ever going to fruitate into anything or happen, and it does. And I do want to say this is quite like, like a showy kind of encounter as well. So I don't know whether you guys go to a show, I don't know whether you guys go to a very fancy restaurant and this person wines and dines you, or vice versa, you might wine and dine them. Um, I don't know whether, I feel like it's an occasion as well where you get to really dress up to the nines, okay? You are feeling absolutely gorgeous when it comes to your next intimate encounter. I am seeing like a nude dress that's coming through, it doesn't have to be, or I'm seeing like something that's, you know, quite a extravagant dress so i want to say like not exactly the dress that you'd wear on a night out but the kind of dress that you might wear to like a wedding reception do you know what i mean like it's not like a clubbing kind of dress it's something that would be way too glamorous for the club something that you'd be waiting for like some kind of charity event to wear but you get to wear it on this next intimate encounter evening that you have and i want to say evening because i can see the moon here okay so it's giving me evening vibes but i don't see you guys doing it i don't see you guys um having your next intimate encounter be an se actual one because what i can see here with the knight of pentacles is this is a slow moving connection that you guys build up slowly because this is something that's going to be long lasting and on this during this next intimate encounter you are going to have healing conversations and i actually can see you guys either looking up at the stars maybe out of a window you guys taking a walk and maybe looking up and going wow like look how um Look how many stars there are in the sky tonight. That's a really stupid way of saying that, but look how full the, the sky is tonight. There's no clouds, you can see all the stars. Oh my God, how romantic. And I see this next intimate encounter being a moment where you say to yourself, and I think they're gonna say to themselves too, this is even better than what I expected. This is even more than what I expected from this connection. And it opens up a whole new possibility here with the Three of Wands, where it's like, wow, what's coming next? It's like all of a sudden, a door opens in your life that you never knew was there, and boom, there's all these possibilities presented to you. And I'm hearing Aladdin, and I've, I've said this in a previous, or sung this in a previous reading, but it's like, it's a whole new world. Okay, so I'm getting that. So I don't know whether this person's a bit like an Aladdin figure, but I'm getting this person actually being a prince. Okay, this person isn't faking being a prince. I get this person being a prince kind of energy and whisking you away on their magic carpet and just showing you, taking you to faraway lands and stuff like that. Okay, so I am really getting like, it's a whole new world. And when I think of that, I think about, um, Katie Price and Peter Andre. <laughs> um, so I don't know whether any of you were aware of like Katie Price and Peter Andre. Um, Katie Price is a glamour model from the UK. Peter Andre's from Australia and he sung a song that goes, oh, mysterious girl, I wanna get close to you. So I don't know whether you're a bit of a mystery to this person or you have been for a while and it's like, this person's a bit of a Peter Andre. They've got all the abs, <laughs> like Peter Andre and they're like, oh, mysterious girl, I want to get close to you. And maybe you're like a bit of a bombshell, like a bit of a kind of glamorous, bit a little bit dangerous, bit of like a bombshell here, a bit like um, Katie Price. But it turned out in the end, when it came to their relationship, she was the one at the beginning who everyone was like, oh, don't trust her. But now in the end, Peter Andre ended up being a little bit of a narc. I'm not saying that this is going to happen within this connection, but... Yeah, I'm just saying you could look a little bit kind of naughty, a little bit risque, a bit of a bombshell, a little bit of like a man or a woman eater, but deep down you're a pure beautiful soul. And I think maybe you've been treated badly in the past because people are intimidated by you, the way that you look or your strength or your attitude. And this person comes in and they're like, I don't need to be intimidated by you because I'm strong too. And you guys just mesh and you just understand each other and it's just beautiful. Right, what else have we got? Okay, yeah, I feel like this is just clarifications of, oh, okay. 
So I've been using these, um, these cards here to cover the backs of these cards because these are a bit rude, but I'm looking at the cards that I've pulled to cover them and I think it's all making sense. So I'm going to use these as extra cards. So there's something around this person. I did say that they're wealthy. Something around this person really helping you with your financial status, your finances in some way. So <clears throat> you guys could be fine financially, okay? So I'm not saying you guys are struggling financially. Some of you maybe, some of you maybe not. But either way, this person comes in and they fertilize something which kind of builds your finances, makes you more well off. Whether this is them coming in with physical money, or whether this is them coming in with advice around money, or whether this is them just giving you this boost of energy where you just find that things flow more easily to you, including money and finances. But there is a big chance of fertilization here <laughs> is something i want to say so bear in mind you could be very very fertile together but this really is a connection which an encounter where it's going to open up a whole new road and a whole new door of opportunities okay and we've got the end of bad health here for some reason so firstly, this person does end a cycle for you. This person comes in, they end a cycle of S-H-I-T-T-Y relationships and connections. Now this is interesting about this end of bad health that I'm seeing here because I've had something happen to me recently, which I'm still not fully, fully 100% sure about, but I met somebody around Christmas time and since I've met them, I've had three like pretty significant illnesses. So, so far this year, I've been pretty much out for the count, guys. <laughs> and on top of those quite significant illnesses, I've also had a lot of little minor illnesses come through as well. So I've had some issues with like my, my wisdom tooth and things like that, okay? And I'm like, oh my God, why am I getting so ill since I've met this person? I've also noticed as well that this person's managed to kind of calm down my nervous system. So I'm not always on high alert anymore. And I feel that this person's came in, calmed down my nervous system and has allowed my body the space to release some of the past weight that I've been holding throughout previous relationships, previous connections and previous experiences in my life. And at first I was worried, I thought, oh my God, is this person making me ill? Like, is this person just a walking illness making me ill? But this person's not necessarily got the same illnesses as me, so it's not even that. I genuinely think this person has calmed my body down to the point where it's like, right, detox time, and I'm just detoxing all of this stuff. And who knows where it comes from, but I was carrying it. So I want to say that it could be something similar here with you guys. This person could be very healing for you. And they end a cycle of pain, like they end a cycle of people coming in and stressing you out, causing you bad health, because stress is the biggest K I double L E R. -er. <laughs> I don't know what words I can say and which ones I can't, so I've got to spell most of them. But stress really is the biggest strain on the human body and someone come in, can come in and stress you out and they've got no idea that they could be causing some major illness within you and this person's going to end a cycle of bad health, illness, severe stress. I mean, we're always going to deal with stress and I do think to a certain extent a life without stress would be quite boring because <laughs> stress can fuel you, but I mean serious stress <laughs> that's debilitating this person's going to come in and they're going to end that cycle and that's beautiful and this could be something that you notice straight away you may feel your energy uplift with this person when you have this next intimate encounter now i do feel intimacy <laughs> during this next intimate encounter holding hands kissing touching I just do not see this going all of the way when it comes to this encounter. I'm just gonna see what other extra info I can pull from these bowls, please. I think they've only dropped one there. Okay, so we've got high vibration, and that's what this connection is. You guys vibe very, very high with each other. Again, it's that vibration of, I even wanna say love, that vibration of love 
and that just improves your health, it improves your energy, your vitality. I love that. I don't know which ones came out of which bowls now. We played until sunrise. Intelligent study. Um, you guys, honestly, I just felt like you guys are going to chat. And I don't know whether I've previously said that. I think I have already in the reading. I feel like on your next intimate encounter, you're just going to be doing a lot of talking. And good conversation as well. I'm not talking about silly things. Like actual intelligent conversations where you're learning a lot about each other. You're learning a lot about other things. Teaching each other a lot. Okay. Shower of roses, like literally. Now, I want to say that you guys could meet in secret at first. It doesn't have to be for everybody, just because the rose can be a symbolism of secretism. So you guys could be meeting in secret at first. But for those of you who aren't meeting in secret because you don't need to meet in secret, it could just be that people never expected you guys to meet, but you're not really keeping a secret. See what I'm saying? Like if this is a work situation, for instance, or a situation where, you know, you're both from the same community and you kind of know the same kind of people, the people around you, even though you guys have organised this meeting, this date, it's a date, babes, it's a date, full on, you're not keeping it a secret, we just haven't told many people. So when people find out, they're like, oh god, you kept that a secret, and it's like, no I didn't, I just went and did it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just feeling that. The Shower of Roses as well, the romanticness. Um, of this intimate encounter, the fact that you're going to be wined and dined and taken on this person's <laughs> magic carpet. I should call a cab, okay, again, I think this is you guys not wanting to go all the way on this first intimate encounter because you have so much respect for each other and I think you both know straight away this is something special. It's not a one night stand, okay? It's more than that and I think there's some restraint that needs to take place from both of you or one of you to be like right normally in a situation like this I would want to put the lips on this person put it all on this person but either you're both like right let's call this a night early or let's not go any further than touching because you want you just know this is more. You just know it's more. Okay. And we played until sunrise. And this could be you guys literally. And I know I did say that you kind of could have cut this night off short. But when I say cutting this night off short, for some of you it could be you cut it off short and you get a cab and you go home and you're just like, oh my god, I just want to touch myself with this person. Or it could be that you guys just cut the intimacy off short. Like, let's not do anything we're going to regret here. But I feel this talking element or hanging out element or this playful element that doesn't involve SEX going on until the early hours of the morning. And for some of you, it could literally be fondling, kissing, cuddling until sunrise. But I really do not see SEX here. I do not, I do not, I do not. This is too sweet and just respectful for that and I love it. Okay, I'm going to leave that there, part number one. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I really enjoyed this reading. This was a lovely energy to start on. And guys, you, um, just a little bit of advice before I go. Allow yourselves to purge. Allow yourself to feel your feelings. Allow yourself to work through those previous wounds um, that you've had through previous relationships and previous connections. Allow yourself to cry if you're somebody who's very earthy. Earth moons as well out there, guys. Allow yourselves to cry. Um, you're releasing a lot at the moment and doing this releasing, crying, letting all of this out is going to free your energy up so, so much. So if you are somebody who's watching this, who's trying to hold everything back and trying to be strong and trying to be brave, just give yourself some time to just whew, let it all out. And that's just a little bit of advice that I want to give you before I leave. But other than that, I want to say, please like this reading if you've made it this far. Drop a little like, takes two seconds, really helps me, helps the channel grow, and so on and so on. Also, comment down below if you've got anything you want to say at all. Absolutely adore hearing from you and subscribe if you do want to see more readings like this because you'll be notified whenever I post a brand new reading if you subscribe. <laughs> um, and yes, take care of yourselves, beauties. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.
Hey there beautiful part number two, welcome to your reading. Let's find out some information around your next intimate encounter. And as I mentioned in the intro to this video, this is an 18 plus reading, but I will be keeping it as tame as I possibly can and dancing around a couple of the things that I've seen within the cards. So I may be explaining something, but overly explaining something in a way where I can keep things sensible. But either way, it's going to be an exciting read and I'm super excited to delve into your energy. So you guys chose this card here with the beautiful lady on it and spirit to begin with wants to tell me to tell you that you are very distracted at the moment now some of you may be distracted by um like your phone social media work things that are going on with friends around you social situations but there's something on spirit saying that you're not in your most kind of like deep feeling energy you're very distracted at the moment you're living very much on the surface at the moment and not so much within so some of you part number twos if you're resonating with this you may have a lot of things around you at the moment that are confusing you when it comes to making choices you may be very very confused at the moment and i do want to say for some of you it could be because you're thinking about your decisions too much rather than feeling through your decisions right now so that's coming through very very strongly and i do want to say part number two we've got a bit of a juicy number here for you it looks like there could be two people in your energy or there is going to be two people in your energy and i want to throw out as many different scenarios here as i possibly can because this is a collective reading but for some of you you could have a person in your life and there's going to be somebody coming in to kind of distract you there you go it's that word again a distraction for some of you who are dating at the moment i feel that there's going to be two people you could date two people or you could be considering two people for a date and you have to make a decision between the, the both of them and i do want to say that this reading could pose at some the reading oh my gosh i'm stumbling on my words at the moment maybe some of you are stumbling on your words a lot at the moment stuttering your words like Maybe some of you are struggling to communicate the way that you feel or how you're, the things that you're thinking right now. See, my head is getting absolutely jammed at the moment. Like it's like there's a traffic jam in my head. So part number two is that could just be me or it could be something that you guys are feeling at the moment. Like there's like a traffic jam in your head right now. Just so much going on in your head. And if that is the case, Spirit wants to say, just relax, breathe and let those thoughts kind of sink into your feelings so that you can um, process the confusion that you're currently feeling. And I don't even know whether that makes sense. <laughs> I'm just reciting what Spirit has just told me to say, but I don't know even whether that makes sense, guys. But yeah, some of you need to just take some more time on your own. Um, I was watching something yesterday, or should I say listening to something? It is a podcast, but I was watching it on YouTube because sometimes people film um, their podcasts don't they these days so we can actually see the conversation taking place and person was saying that a lot of people have mental health issues because they don't take the time out to process their feelings and feelings get backed up and they cause these traffic jams um, within our minds within our hearts within our bodies and he didn't explain it like this, I'm explaining it like this, so I'm probably butchering it all, but he said, as humans, we are supposed to process these feelings and we never give ourselves enough time to process these feelings, to work through these feelings, to understand these things that have happened in our lives and they just get backlogged as confusion, trauma, emotional distress. And I wanna say that for you guys, maybe you need to take a little bit more time out just to kind of sit in your feelings, feel your feelings, process what's happened through the day, <laughs> um, process 555 as I just looked at the timer there as well. So maybe you guys are going through lots of changes at the moment as well on top of this, which is causing more confusion and more conflict within your energy. Some of you may be feeling very anxious as well, that's coming through too, but 
Um, yeah, Samira is just saying you, the cure to a lot of your confusion right now is taking time out wherever you can on a daily basis, preferably, but if it can't be on a daily basis, you know, every couple of days or whenever you possibly can once a week, just to sit with yourself, process your feelings, process the events that have happened through the day or through the week and understand them. Um, Something else this person said, which is really interesting, which may resonate for some of you is, they said if you're not processing your feelings at three in the afternoon, it's going to, it's gonna, they're gonna push their way through at three in the morning. So I don't know whether some of you are having some issues around sleep as well, because again, these sleep issues are around the fact that you're not processing events that are happening through the day you're not processing your emotions you're just kind of sweeping everything under the carpet and just hoping it goes away but the carpet is bulging right now and you're starting to trip over it and things like that so let's get the hoover out guys let's get the hoover out but what this is doing essentially is distracting you from your true path the directions that you truly need to take and i think for some of you you may be thinking so much with your mind like I need to make a decision and you know when you're making a decision with your mind there's so many factors that come into play when it comes to making the right decision you could think about a thousand things for each um, option as to why you should and shouldn't take that option but when you let this these things sink into your heart space into your feelings your heart just knows which one feels right there's like an instinct there your gut instinct as well it just knows that that one feels better that is the one for you and i think that's something that maybe you're neglecting a little bit my part number twos um some of you more than others okay i'm not here to be like mm, sort this out like sort it out um I'm just here to recite the messages from spirit. So take the messages from what I've said that relay to you, that um, relate to you is actually the word I was meant to use there. And the rest will be for somebody else. So don't think that I'm here, like you need to do this and you need to do that, da 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 da, da okay? So I think my part number twos, if you guys aren't on dating sites or if you guys aren't open to advances through social media, there must be something else going on as to how you're getting dates like so i'm throwing out dating websites advances through social media i think for some of you your parents are involved and they're saying oh what about this person oh what about that person <laughs> okay that's what i'm seeing coming through here but i can see a lot of talking a lot of making yourself look good a lot of making yourself sound good and um appear as good and it's just giving me very dating website social media kind of energy here where it's like this is my profile this is me and i'm showing you the best version of me so that i can get a date all right so that's the energy i'm feeling with you guys part number two so if you're not on dating websites and you're not on social media this may be making yourself look a certain way or appear a certain way or parents making you appear a certain way to get you a date um a husband or a wife uh, or something along those lines so part number two is if you guys aren't on social media and there's a different way that you're attracting these multiple people please let me know down below because i'm trying to work out other ways other than social media here for you guys but you guys look the part you guys are charming you guys know exactly what to say you guys have a way with words now i don't know whether we've got like a lot of cancerian energy here because i'm getting you just charming the pants off people and just knowing how to magnetize somebody in i'm getting fire energy with you guys as well um could have some leo venuses here too there is a bit of an emphasis around the hair so this could be your hair being very beautiful long or thick or very noticeable we've got red hair here for some of you as well and or it could be this person who's coming in or these people who are coming in with um very nice extravagant hair of some kind now listen up guys because <laughs> i think for some of you this is a little bit of a warning there is a positive person coming into your life 
and a false person coming into your life. One of them is trying to appear like they are the bee's knees and that they're perfect for you, but they are a fake cakey maker and you ain't got time for them. That, that comes from a comedy, Reeves and Mortimer, and they did a sketch of MasterChef. So if there's anybody out there who remembers that sketch, that MasterChef sketch by Reeves and Mortimer, please comment down below. I'd be very surprised if anyone comments down below. One, two, one, two, as I look at the clock, okay? So that means you're very close to something very positive coming your way and something that you've been working hard for okay so good news for you part number two something good is on the flipping horizon it's so flipping close just keep believing keep manifesting the thing that you want but back to Reeves and Mortimer um yeah there was just a part where um they the guy had made a cake but it wasn't really a cake it was a shoe and then Reeves I think was like you're a fake cake you make it and I ain't got time for you Ooh, and just moves on to the next person on MasterChef but anyway whatever um I'm trying to think if there's a message in that maybe you need to look out for someone's shoes maybe there'll be a sign through someone's shoes maybe one person is going to pretend that they're very wealthy and they're very well to do but then you notice that their shoes are dirty or something <laughs> one person's going to make out that they are perfect and they're neat and they're tidy and they're organized and they're healthy but then you notice that their shoes are dirty and you're just like well you don't seem to be taking care of your shoes the way that you say that you're taking care of your life so <laughs> that could that's random as hell guys but um fake cakey maker the shoes the lies trying to sell you tell you that a shoe is a cake so there's somebody who's a false person who is going to say and try and kind of like put like I am confused right now with this energy so you're going to be confused but the confusion is going to be the tip off that this is the person who's the fake cakey maker all right and that this ain't the person for you but this person's going to come in and it's like they're going to put the fog in your eyes they're going to Neptune you Neptune is a fog planet and it's confusing and it's it can be lies, it can be fantasies, and this person's gonna come in and I'm just gonna make up this example, it's gonna be the worst example and this isn't gonna be a real thing that's gonna happen, but they might say, I'll pick you up at eight and you're like, amazing, great. You get ready for eight, but this person ends up turning up at like 10, 11 o'clock at night and you're like, well, one, you haven't even contacted me to tell me that you're gonna be late. Two, why are you so late? This is very suspicious. And three, what in the F are we gonna do now? I thought we had a dinner, we had a table booked, and now what, are you gonna take me through the drive-through? And this person will swear blind that they said that they will come to pick you up at 10 or 11 o'clock, between 10 and 11. And you will go, you did not. You said eight o'clock. And they will say, no, I didn't. I said between 10 and 11. And you're gonna be like, I am so confused right now. So bear in mind, you may notice little things like that with one of the people. Please eliminate, self node them, okay? Self node is the stuff that you need to release from the past. Self node the mofo, please. Straight away, put them in the universal bin. And then there's another one, this male here, who doesn't have to be male, they're just coming up as a male, but this person who's coming through as somebody who could be your main person, your main male or your main female. I might pull a little card on this person. What are the indications of, I saw the two of cups on the viewfinder as I was just an ace of cups, eight of swords. Oh, what does this mean? What does it mean? This main male, please, spirit, give us some. Oh, I'm flipping out. Why is it going to be that many cards? Really do put me to work, don't you, Tarot? Okay. This is confusing. This is very complex. Three of Swords. The Star. Five of Wands and the Three of Wands. For some of you, this person, who's a long-term person for you, for some of you, not all of you, could be somebody who has broken your heart in the past and is work, trying to work on healing it. Or this person could come in offering to heal you from a past 
situation, relationship, and you may find it hard to trust this person, or you may be like, wow, um, you would, you, like, you're letting me speak about my ex, you're letting me talk about these wounds, and are, are you for real? Like, are you real? There's that coming through, but then there's also this person coming through as somebody who you may know, as somebody who's previously had their heart broken, and they've healed from that, and maybe they're fighting I think this last one could be the, the main one for you guys, right? This person could be known to have had their heart broken, they've healed from it. Maybe you know that they've been cheated on. Maybe you know that they've been through the ringer when it comes to relationships. And they have healed it and have decided that they want to put in the work and put in the fight to get you. Maybe this person here who's the one who's the main male or main female, the one who's the main one for you, or at least for now, is the one who has been fighting for you for quite a while. I hope that makes sense for someone out there, okay? But that's what I'm getting some indication around this main male. Now, I feel this main male, because it says main male, is the encounter in question here. Can be main female, all right? Can be main female. So, some of these are upside down because they're Rudy Rudy cards. Some of even the backs of the cards have been covered up by these cards because they're Rudy Rudy backs. But I found that the cards that I've covered the backs of the Rudy Rudy cards also relate to what's on the Rudy Rudy cards. So I'm using them as extra cards for the reading. Anyways, so when it comes to this encounter, you know, for some of you, I want to say this is a past encounter and it's already happened. For some of you, it's going to happen. I feel that very strongly. I feel you guys meeting through communication of some kind and going on a date or meeting maybe just this can be anything you know this can be meeting for food meeting for drinks and um, meeting for a cookery class this is something that could just be a fun date that you decide to meet up with this person I even want to say for some of you this could be something that you or an encounter that you enter thinking that this is just a friendship you know, I don't know whether I'm fully into this person, I don't know whether I'm going to fancy this person, um, but I'm going to go for the laughs, for the SHITs and the gigs, all right? I'm going to go for the gigs. Could be a gig, because <laughs> I've just said gigs twice. And you end up necking, is it right when I'm saying necking this person? I literally just, you guys end up putting it on each other. I'm just like seeing you guys snogging each other's flipping faces off. I feel for some of you, you could be in a cab and you are just snogging each other's faces off in the back of the cab. For some of you, I'm seeing you going on um, one of these, oh, what is it? Well, not like the horse and carriage, but uh, I don't know what they're called, but like little carriages that take you around the town and stuff like that, okay? Um, and just like kissing each other, like, I just see you guys like, snogging each other's face off, like, big time when it comes to this encounter. Now, let's see what else we've got. Do, do, do. I think it's very different for all of you. I think some of you will be intimate, full, full on intimate with this person. And then I think some of you won't, all right? I can't tell you whether there's going to be actual the actual contact here when it comes to this person but what I see after this very fun date and the communication is fire like you guys are making each other laugh um I do see it being more of a let's get loose kind of energy when you guys meet up again like this great friendship energy between you guys and it could be this that confuses you because you may be thinking wow this person feels more like a friend than they do like a lover but what I want to say is for you guys is I think this person is attractive, but they're not playing you like previous people have. They're not trying to kind of put you down to make you more desperate. They're not trying to play it cool and play it cold to make you more hot. They're just doing their thing. And I think you're confusing the lack of toxicity to being like to this person being friend zoned when like spirit wants to say oh 
spirit wants to say, oh, I don't want anyone to be offended by this, but like my guides are really stern and they're so stern with me as well that they want to say, come on babes, grow up. Well, they said just grow up, but I'm saying, come on babes. I'm being a little bit more like careful with it, but they want to say, grow up. Come on, grow up. You need to you need to learn, for some of you, maybe for all of you, but you need to learn what a healthy connection is now. Grow up. Make the decision that's for the long term, not for the short term. Now I see you after this intimate encounter with this person going like a little bit ghost or walking away or just going a bit quiet with this person. Be different for all of you. But you do decide to go, mm, I don't think this is the one for me. Or I'm going to keep this one on the back burner. And maybe at this point, maybe this false person will come in. Or maybe at this point, you will dabble back with this false person. Because I do see you guys having two people at some point. Could be now, could be in the future. What's this King of Cups here, Spirit? For this intimate encounter, what is this King of Cups? Oh, that one flew. Bear with me just one sec, guys. Please don't see my face. My face does not need to be seen. Eight of Pentacles. Like, your work, your work, you walk away from this main male or main female who's willing to put the work in for you, who's willing to put the emotional work in, the physical work in to have something with you. And I think this person will still stick around even when you walk away, <laughs> which is so flipping sweet. They're stuck on you. I don't know whether this person has blue or green eyes because I'm seeing bluey kind of greeny eyes um, when I'm looking at the cards popping out at me. This false person's eyes look dark. So for some of you, God, did you see my face? Um, for some of you, this false person may have dark eyes and this like real person may have lighter eyes, but don't take that as gospel because it may be different for all of you, okay? Um, but that's something to look out for if you're already seeing the signs between two people and you're like, do you know what, you're right there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this person wants to put in the work and they put in the work when you're having this encounter as well. Like they will express their emotions, I think, on this initial encounter. And for those of you who do end up going all the way with this person, I do want to say be careful. There could be a risk of pregnancy. Imagine. <laughs> um, but if not, this person, without you knowing, is going to plant a seed just takes a little time for that seed to, to grow out of the soil and start poking out of the soil, okay? You'll have no idea that you're going to go back to this person. And that this person could be somebody more long-term than you think. Because you have a choice at this point. You walk away and you go back to having a choice. But I think potentially for some of you, the pain that comes from the next people after this person is going to make you kind of, um, what's, what's, how do I want to say this? Like clue up, clue up is what wanted to come out like, to begin with, but that doesn't sound right, but it's going to really clue you up. It's going to really make you go, do you know what? I need to make healthy decisions now when it comes to my love life. And you start looking at the options in front of you and the people who approach you. And you start being like, do you know what? You're gorgeous. You've got a lot of what I like, but you're not healthy for me. Bye. Okay. You start rejecting the false people, the unhealthy people. You stop looking at people on a surface level and you start looking at people on the inside and whether you're attracted to them on the inside rather than just on the outside, okay? It could be a case, part number two, is where you might get hurt for you to kind of be pushed back into your feelings, okay? For some of you, you might have already gone through this hurt and you've been pushed back into your feelings, all right? And then you make a decision 
to literally clear away all of the demons and you make the choice to move forward when it comes to your love life with new found boundaries and i think when you start to opt for the healthy option you'll see that this person this main male or main female here never left your side and you're gonna be like that's pretty special <laughs> Hmm. I'm going to pull some extra bits and bobs from the bowls to finish off for you guys. Okay. Saviour. This person literally comes in, this main male or main female literally comes in as a saviour for you. That's wonderful. Love that. Intense. See what else we've got before I go into them. Analytical and authoritative. Okay, so this person that you have this encounter with will show that intensity, that emotional intensity, <coughs> when um, you are on this date. I'm feeling here, it's definitely a date, it's definitely a setup. You guys have set this up to meet and have some fun, but this person may be so intense showing their emotion like this king of cups here where you're like oh my gosh like they really have like shown all of their cards it might just be a little bit it might even be a bit of a red flag for you but this person's just really comfortable sharing how they feel about you i'm feeling some of you even like getting like a little bit of an ick being like oh god you come on a little bit too strong this feels too easy it's coming through as well um, but you're going to realise like, wow, that intensity that they have for you, the intensity of their feelings that they have for you is going to start becoming very, very S-E-X-E. -E. <laughs> you're going to realise in the end, like, dang, like, this person is devoted to me and mm, I'm just feeling all sorts of feelings going through my body now. I can just feel this person being somebody who's very authoritative, okay? So they're not, you know, they're not a weak person. It's not like they're just like a little puppy dog. It's like they're a big, beastly, scary dog. But for you, they're a little puppy and you find that so flipping hot. So you may find that this person could be very um, tall, very big built, could be somebody who um, just goes to the gym a lot and is very muscular, okay? They could literally be like five foot, but they're like muscular. There's something around this person that you have this encounter with being very, very strong looking, whether they're male or female, very, very strong looking, stands up straight, okay? This is somebody who you wouldn't want to have a fight with them in a back alley, let's put it that way. But then when they're with you, like maybe even that look on their face changes, like they go from having this very stern kind of face, maybe they've got very good bone structure as well. And they go for, from for having these very, this very stern face. I'm getting predator eyes with them too. So I don't know whether you guys know about predator eyes. So predator eyes are when, Oh, do I have an example here to show you? Yeah, I do with this lady here. So I'm going to try and show you through this card. You might see, you might not. And I wouldn't even be able to show you my eyes because I don't have predator eyes. Um, and predator eyes are a good thing, by the way. So look here. So flipping, this is going to be difficult, isn't it? So don't look at my belly. Don't look at my belly, all right? So can you see how this part of the eye here, where the um, like tear ducts are? Is it the tear ducts? Like the inner corner of the eye slants down a little bit. Okay, not everybody has that where this part slants down, all right? And if you have um, eyes that slant down when it comes to those like inner corners, they are called predator eyes and they are supposed to be the most attractive eye shape. And obviously, you know, people's preferences will differ. Some people will be like, oh, I want some nice Bambi eyes. I'd say that I've got Bambi eyes, I'd say. I hope so anyway. Some of you might comment and be like, eh, you don't have Bambi eyes, you have crap eyes. <laughs> um, but I would say that mine are more Bambi-esque. They're like a little bit round and a little bit innocent, even though my stare doesn't look very innocent. It's so weird. Um, but I think you can tell so much from people's eyes. 
like you can tell a lot about their inner world through their eyes you know when you look into some people's eyes and they've got like child eyes and it's like oh my god there's like a little child in there like these sparkly little innocent eyes and they could look like the scariest people in the world they could be like six thousand feet tall and 5,000 feet wide and have like the meanest bone structure or even have these predator eyes but those sparkly eyes you're like there's a little kid in there little inner child shining in there and then you've got people who um have um the k-i-double-l eyes like where it's like oh my gosh that person is angry in there you can see the anger through their eyes and then with me you can see my defences through my eyes and I always do this by looking at pictures of people and actually doing this, hiding their face um, and just showing their eyes because they could have a massive broad smile on their face but once you hide that smile you can see exactly what's going on in their head and for me my stare is always really really serious even if I've got a big massive broad smile my eyes are like don't even dare, <laughs> I have got weapons like it's that kind of um energy when it comes to my eyes so yeah um predator eyes so i want to say no, i want to say this person um may have predator eyes um where was i going with that ah, you may notice with them they may have like um those those predator eyes right i'm <laughs> gonna leave that part there i don't know whether i was going into something else but um, it'll come back to me if it was important and analytical like this person's intelligent as well and i want to say like you may have previously dealt with some right dumb asses like and this person's intelligent they got the shit together like they've got potential what else do we have tell me how dirty i am okay and we started in the cab i told you what did i say what did i say uh, the cab and you guys just necking off with each other potentially in a cab or one of those little horse and carriagey things i told you you started in the cab you're just necking off with each other like just snogging 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 when it comes to this um intimate encounter tongues at the back of the throats full on tell me how dirty i am i know what i was saying about the predator eyes it just came back to me this person could have these like mean predator eyes which is like those downy turned eyes but with you when they look at you they just their whole face just goes weak and they just look like a little puppy um I and mean, as i said eventually you're going to find that very 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 hot um and I mean, if like if anyone was to like hurt you or anything like that, they turn from being a puppy into like a big, massive. I don't even know the names of dogs that are protective, but big, big dog. Um, and tell me how dirty I am. Um, 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 um. um. I just think there's going to be a little bit of um, essay actual talk when it comes to this first encounter. A lot of snogging, and. A bit of like promiscuous conversation here a bit of like oh i'd, I'd love to um i can't even say these things because i'll probably get the flipping censored or something but you know I'd, I'd love to run my hand up your thigh and feel that yeah Do you know what I, mean? I can't say these things but, you know there could be a little bit of talk like that you know i'd love to take you home with me tonight and stuff like that and you're just like <laughs> <laughs> what would you do in that situation? I'd just be awkward. I'd just go, ha, <laughs> and giggle, but you're just like, <laughs> no. Although you probably do it a lot sexier than that. I just sound like an idiot. But anyways, I'm going to leave that there, part number two. <laughs> I hope this resonates in some way. And um, if you made it this far, I do ask that you like the reading. It really does help the video circulate, it helps the channel grow, it makes me happy. And please subscribe if you like content like this because you'll be notified whenever I do post a brand new pick a card reading. And comment down below if you've got anything to say at all. I absolutely adore hearing from you. Until next time, beautiful part number two, take care of yourselves. Goodbye.
Hello there, amazing pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Let's find out some information around your next intimate encounter. And as mentioned in the intro to this video, this is an 18 plus reading, but I am keeping it as tame as possible so I don't get into any trouble. So if anything a little bit rude pops up within the cards, I am going to dance around the information that wants to come out so that I can say it in the most sensible way. So you guys chose this beautiful card here with this beautiful curvaceous lady. So firstly, it is giving me the energy that you are very feminine. Now you could be masculine or female, but you're giving me very feminine vibes. Now you don't have to be like uber curvy or anything like that, but you've just got something that's just so feminine. I even wanted to say like feline-esque about you. So I won't be surprised if you do. I want to say like catch a lot of people's eyes, but also people see you and they kind of fantasize about you a lot. So you could be the kind of person who does get a lot of people coming your way for sex there's just something very naturally alluring around you i don't know whether i'm speaking to any part number threes who have prominent neptune placements even prominent moon placements here i even want to throw in like prominent venus placements <laughs> as well but i'm feeling neptune very very strongly so i could be looking at someone who's got like neptune conjunct midheaven neptune conjunct ascendant neptune in the first house Neptune conjunct sun, oh my gosh, imagine. But Neptune is the high octave of Venus and Neptune can be very um, misunderstood. So firstly, it can talk about people being drawn to you but having no idea why just like i'm just so drawn to pile number three and i can't even think straight i don't even know why i'm drawn i can't even put it into logic why i'm so incredibly drawn to pile number three but also neptune can give someone or gift a native who's got a very prominent neptune placement like an etheric kind of beauty like it's the ultimate beauty the epitome of beauty so if you do have any prominent neptune placements in your chart and this could even be like a neptune trine moon or neptune trine neptune trine venus you can be like a very very beautiful person like people can be like breathtaking by your beauty so i am feeling that coming through for my pile number threes i'm also feeling a lot of 12th house placements as well so we could be talking to some pile number threes who have prominent 12th house placements we could even be looking at like mercury in the 12th sun in the 12th venus in the 12th you know all of those um personal planets like falling in the 12th house as well now there's something around you guys fearing something fearing pain fearing challenge, fearing relationships, connections, and just not moving at all because of it. I'm feeling like someone who's like stuck in the mud. So <laughs> I'm probably sinking into the mud as well right now, where it's like, ugh, I feel stuck, staying stuck, but I feel petrified to move forward with anything because I don't want to be hurt. And Spirit wants to say to you guys, pain is inevitable. Whether you're looking for it or not, we are all going to experience pain in this lifetime on a frequent basis because this is part of the human experience. So Spirit is saying, get yourself unstuck. Get back out there. Now, for some of you, there may be a decision coming up with regards to a particular person coming in, i.e. this person that we're talking about today. And there's something around you needing to not fear this situation. Now, I'm going to be real with you. This situation looks a little bit complex. So logically, it might be like, oh, this is a bad idea. But emotionally, you're going to feel a draw and a pull towards this person. And it could be that Neptune effect again, where you're like, I don't even know why. <laughs> like, how am I so drawn to this person? Probably a lot of Neptune energy between you and this person who I'm picking up on as well. So... Um, again, that undeniable draw towards each other and having no freaking idea why. So it could be that you guys are pretty much stuck at the moment, not wanting to move forward within connections or meaningful connections because of fear of being hurt, or you're going to feel that stuck feeling when this person comes along because on the surface, logically, you're going to be like, I have got so many things to fear when it comes to going for this connection. And Spirit is trying to say to you, as a bit of word of advice, for people who are going through this now, and also people who may be going through this in the future, okay, a bit of um, advice for you right now to take note of, 
go for it work through it for a lot of you this could be a karmic relationship coming through for you within this intimate encounter bear in mind karma can be positive and karma can be negative and whenever we use the phrase karmic relationships people literally shiver inside they're like oh no i know but karmic oh, scary and it's like no you want to be scared of twin flames babes <laughs> that's what you want to be scared of um because they're intense and they are difficult but karm a karmic relationship doesn't have to be negative karma a karmic relationship is just an indication of there being some kind of contract that needs to play out and bear in mind like it's you that holds the karma it's not the person that holds the karma it's you that holds the karma so if you've got this karmic contract to work through fear of vulnerability if you decide not to work through that fear of vulnerability with person a and you let go of person A, person B is going to come in and push you to work through that fear of vulnerability. Oh, you decide not to work through it with person B. Okay, person C is going to come in and they're still going to push you to work through this karma. All right? So a lot of the time, the karma lies within you or lies within them. Okay? Um, it doesn't always have to be negative. We have a choice as well how we want to work through this karma. Do we want to do it the easy way or do we want to do it the difficult way? Because I've been in connections previously where it's like, after the connection has ended, I've been like, you know, we could have done this this way and it would have been so much easier. So who is this person who, um, you, <laughs> sorry, I'm just kind of interrupting myself here. If you don't know who this person is, do you... You might not admit this, but do you ever feel like you're speaking to somebody who doesn't exist? I was speaking to a friend of mine and she said something about dancing in her kitchen like while she's cooking, I don't know, dancing in her kitchen while she's cooking and <laughs> so I'm gonna, it's gonna be so embarrassing when I tell you my part of this, but she's dancing in the kitchen while she's cooking and she's literally imagining but not even actively imagining it's like her future partner is with her dancing too so she's on her own and she's just like oh my god it feel i can feel my future partner with me dancing too um and i was like oh my gosh like i literally do the same thing like my guilty pleasure is to come into this room <laughs> clear everything out of the way clear a space, put some music on and just dance my little heart out. Absolutely love dancing. It's great exercise as well. It's way more fun than going for a run. So I just dance and I dance and I dance and I dance. And I always think, oh my God, if someone put a camera in my house and saw me, they'd be like, what is this crazy person doing? <laughs> but if it means I'm crazy, I mean, I'm having fun and I'm enjoying it. So call me crazy. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I feel like my person and this has been i've been doing this for years and years and years all right <laughs> but sometimes i feel like my person is sitting watching me and i'm dancing with them <laughs> sometimes i feel like they're dancing with me so i knew exactly what she was talking about when she said that it's not like it's like i'm going to actively imagine my person with you you just feel them dancing with you you're not even actively doing it if anything it makes you feel awkward but it's like i can feel this person dancing with me i can feel this person watching me and I do feel it's a form of manifestation, manifesting this person in through these acts. And it could even be like for seeing the future. You know, I may be dancing for my person one day. <laughs> take a lot of confidence. <laughs> um, it take a lot of confidence, but I may be. And I'm like, in that moment, I'm like, oh my God, I'm here, I'm doing it. I'm doing this thing that I felt for so long. Anyway, whatever, I've stayed on this subject for so long. But I don't know whether you're feeling that, whether that's happening to you or whether you feel like you're talking to them or they're talking to you at times. And you're like, kind of shaking your head in these moments, like, whoa, what's going on here? Like, have I just been speaking to someone who's not there? So guys, like, part number three, are you guys quite psychic? Are you guys quite... 12th, 12th house and um, 12th house heavy 8th house heavy um pisces heavy or scorpio heavy because something very psychic very intuitive about you and if you are doing this and you are feeling this person you it's not you going crazy you are genuinely connecting with this person's energy 
Okay, and that's coming up for this person that you're having this encounter with. So this person coming through here must be very serious in your life. Now, when it comes to who this person is, this person could be somebody who comes in and things have to be a little bit secret at first. Now, I don't know whether, and I'm going to throw out a ton of scenarios or as many scenarios as I can pull from this energy because it's a collective reading. Um, I can feel people who are friends in a friends group and end up getting it on and having to keep things quiet at first because they don't want to interrupt the friends group. I feel, um, I can see a pub here, reminds me a bit of the uh, Queen Vic in EastEnders. I can feel, so some of you might be from London, I can feel some of you going to a communal place, like a pub or a bar, um, and again, you meet somebody who it's like, dang, like I've got a thing for this person, but we need to keep it quiet because we don't want everyone in the pub, <laughs> for instance, to know about this because everyone's going to be pushing this and it's not going to allow us the freedom to work out and decide whether we're right for each other. Do you know what I mean? You, you could be in situations where other people could influence your connection, push your connection or make things feel uncomfortable within this connection. Or for some of you, this could be work again, some kind of community at work. And it's like, oh my gosh, like I do not need this stress at work. I have fell for somebody at work and we can't keep our hands off each other. We need to keep this quiet to begin with. I can't be dealing with everybody in the office knowing about this. Or last but not least, and this won't be for everybody, so please don't be offended. This could be an affair <laughs> of some kind where you guys should not be seeing each other. Because I do see a lot of meeting in secret or there being some secrecy around this, okay? For some of you, it'll be full on secrecy. For some of you, it'll be like, please don't tell Bob, please don't tell Jill. And could we please not tell the people at the pub? <laughs> okay. Now, there's also a fear of judgment around this as well, feeling like people are going to judge you. This could be your paranoia in general. Genuinely, you could be quite a parano par paranormal person. Could be quite a paranormal person. Paranormal is a slip of the tongue there. We do have the eighth house here. So you could be somebody who is into the paranormal. Um, but you could be quite a paranoid person as well. Like, it's like, oh, I don't want people to be like, oh, what are you doing with them? And da 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 da. And don't you think you're moving on too quick from your ex? You know, you're just one of those people who's like, you really do care what other people think. And that's fine because some of us are more introverted and don't care. <laughs> and then some of us are more extroverted and notice, like, the looks and the words that other people say about you and it's like oh god like i live in that outside world so people judging me is painful and then you have delusional people like me who live on the inside and i don't notice that people are being judgmental i don't notice any of that stuff so i'm just like oh everything's fine isn't it everyone approves don't they <laughs> um <clears throat> it doesn't matter that i'm going out in my pajamas right now to go and get milk does it <laughs> i don't do that but i do get in the um in the car sometimes in my dressing gown if someone else is driving but again i don't care if anyone sees me in my dressing gown um and thinks i'm a tramp don't care don't care i'm delusional um so huh another scenario coming through a lot of scenarios for you guys this could be someone that you meet after a divorce and in this divorce you come off a lot more wealthy than you were before it <laughs> um, so bear that in mind too um but we've also got sudden wealth here so other examples of this sudden wealth I've got really itchy leg other examples of this sudden wealth this person could be wealthy you could have sudden wealth, could be some inheritance coming through as well. Inheritance is big here, very, very big here with the eighth house too. Sudden wealth in the eighth house, the eighth house can talk about um, inheritance. So look out for somebody who's had inheritance or look out for a time where you gain some kind of inheritance of some kind, or you may have already gained some inheritance. Um, and it's like, oh, there's a person going to come in. Now, this person is instantly going to take a liking to you. They're instantly, you're going to see it in their eyes. You know, again, you know these people around you that you fear are judging you. They know, they can see it. They can see it when you look at each other. It's reminding me of EastEnders again. Just soaps in general, but all TV shows in general where 
there's two characters and you just know from the get-go those two are going to get together because of the way that they look at each other. It can be, you know, you can be waiting three years for two people in these standards to get together, but you know from the first moment they meet, you're like, they're going to get together because they're looking at each other in a certain way that they don't look at other characters. Um, and I do want to say, like, this is the same with you guys. People can see um, the connection between you guys because of just the way that you look at each other and the way that your body language is with each other. So you may think that you're keeping it secret. But you ain't <laughs> and it's beautiful as well because genuinely like ugh, this person they come in and instantly they show you love you got to show you love i don't know how that song goes out in the words you got to show me love heartbreaks and promises of him more than my share could be you i'm tired of meeting oh i don't know the words i'm tired of Beating someone and going nowhere, nowhere, yeah. All I need is somebody who really cares. Yeah, so, <laughs> sorry. I quite like that song, actually. Um, so, yeah, you could literally be like, I'm sick of being heartbroken, I'm sick of all the promises, and this person comes in and they just show you love. <laughs> okay, so, that is this person. <clears throat> Moving on to the event in question, the intimate encounter in question. Oh, I feel a little bit lost with this one now and I've gone down to the intimate encounter. Okay, I'm hearing should I stay or should I go? <laughs> so I don't know, sorry that was, a, that was a cough and a laugh at the same time. <laughs> should I stay or should I go? And that is going to be your energy when it comes to this person. You are going to be one foot in, one foot out with this person. So you're going to accept um, an invitation of some kind of connection between you guys in secret. It's in secret. This could even be around somebody's house. I'm going to pull for that. Where is this spirit? Can you give me any indication as to where this is? The chariot. We've got the chariot out twice here. It's not giving me the information I want. Let's have some more. <coughs> Takes opportunity to clear my throat. Okay. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it says, sorry. Um, I know what spirit's trying to tell me now because I looked at this um, four of cups and I could see the moon and I was like, well, the moon represents the home. And what I was feeling is that this is going to happen at someone's home. And then I looked at both cards and both the chariot and the four of cups are both cancer cards, which rule the moon. And cancer is the home. So, <laughs> yeah, it is clarifying what I was thinking. I think this intimate encounter is going to happen at one of your homes. And you're going to enter this being like, this might just be a fun night. And I don't know whether I want this to be anything serious. I want to take this easy. No pressure whatsoever. And with this Queen of Wands here, I do think you're going to be looking fire. You're going to be looking hot. You're going to be oozing this feminine energy that I said that you embody. And you're going to be like, look, I'm here for a bit of creation. Because the, 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 um, living out, the Queen of Wands, I can't get my words out now. Honestly, I think you might make this person stutter when they see you, when they're around you, when they're in this intimate connection with you, where they're just gonna be like, oh my God, you look gorgeous. I don't know whether you're going to, I'm getting Bridget Jones coming through now for some reason. <laughs> Why is Bridget Jones coming through? I don't really remember that film very well. Um, but I don't know whether there's like a femininity to you and a fun, funniness about you. Um, and I'm just seeing like you, like cooking or something and it will be very humorous, but you, do you know what I see? I don't know whether I, I could be talking to some palm number threes who are like amazing cooks, okay? And if I am, maybe this part isn't for you. But for those of you who are like just average cooks, or maybe you're like, oh god, I'm not the best cook. It's a little bit. I'd say I'm average. I say I'm an average cook. You know, sometimes it tastes phenomenal. Sometimes my food goes a little bit south, okay? Sometimes I get a little bit too creative and I mess things up. But I'm getting Bridget Jones energy, where it's like you're trying to make an effort and like you've um maybe you've kind of like ballsed up the dinner a little bit or maybe even in your eyes you feel like you've ballsed it up but in their eyes they're like this is amazing so it doesn't have to be a full-on bridget jones moment but no matter what 
you turn up and like answer the door again doesn't have to be exactly like this but it's this kind of vibe turn up answer the door you've got like smoke in the back <laughs> like clearly something's burning you've got a bit of like i don't know flour on your face but you are in this stunning outfit with like ever all your best assets on show and this person's like uh I don't know what's going on right now in your flat or in your house, but I I cannot stop staring at you and your body. You look phenomenal, you look gorgeous. So I'm getting that kind of energy where this person's kind of stuttering, like, you know, or you could go around their house and it could be like, you're flustered and you're like, oh my God, like the cab is late or like, oh my God, I didn't know where to park. And then I fell over or I scuffed my shoe and this and that. And you turn up all flustered and they're just like, I don't know what you've just been through, but you are just the most beautiful sight. I'm feeling like a red dress as well. I don't know whether it's because I wore a red dress on the weekend. <laughs> um, or whether I'm not giggling at that. Or whether it's all this fire energy I'm feeling here and this Venusian kind of like, love kind of energy. So I don't know whether you're wearing a red dress. I can see Bridget Jones wearing a red dress. So I don't know whether she wore a red dress in the movie. Um, it doesn't have to be a red dress. I'm getting like... Yeah, there's like a lot of boobage on the show <laughs> um, when it comes to what you wear on this evening. I think like there's some of you may even kind of slip into like a slip, like a bit of a nighty or something like that as well. And again, this person's like, wow, your body is just unbelievable out of this world. And they're kind of like stuttering because they're just like, oh, like they can't catch their breath when they look at you. That's, yeah, we love that. But yeah, there's a fun element to you, a creative element to you. And um, guys, you do go into this thinking this person's an option. This person's not a be all and end all. They're not an end goal. This person's an option. But, and I do have some of the cards turned down because they're rude. And I do have some cards, oh, sugar, on top of other cards because the backs of the cards are even rude. <laughs> um, let me just sort this out. But... I think this on this intimate encounter when you guys meet, on this next intimate encounter that you have, whether this be your first meeting or whether this be your next meeting, you do it. I honestly think you do the deed because you two, <sighs> right, did anyone when you were younger ever have a thing called dry S-E-X? or call it dry S-E-X, when you were rubbing, but you weren't actually inside, or they weren't inside. Dry S-E-X, because we had something where it was like, oh, we didn't do anything, we just had dry S-E-X. <laughs> where you were kind of like, you can be clothed, or you can be bare, um, and yeah, so I'm just saying, you either do it, or you have dry S-E-X where it's like you're both there and it could just be a lot of teasing or it could be all the way so i'm just saying make sure you um take your pill on time <laughs> um, if i'm talking to any females here so yes and all i can see here and unfortunately i can't actually i can't shake because i can hide the rude bit see them two there on the chariot the two sphinxes one of them has their eyes bandaged bandaged their eyes covered and the other one has their mouth covered one of you doesn't want to speak of this connection the other one with the eyes might not want to see it clearly or might not be able to see it clearly i was using these cards here to cover the rudy rudy backs of these cards but i was finding through the piles that these cards that i was covering these rudy cards with were actually um relating to the reading as well so i'm starting to use them as additional cards here now so ah, okay when you guys meet someone is going to if this if someone is taken here someone is going to feel like they are Taking another person from another person, that's coming up here. Again, doesn't have to be for everybody. For a lot of you, you're going to enter this connection with the mindset of, I am in control, I am independent, 
I am this queen of wands, I'm hot, I'm single, I'm independent, and I don't need a man to make it happen, I something being free, I don't know what that word is now, I'm not too sure. I'm singing a lot today, um, but this person ends up stealing your desire is what I want to say like stealing your heart stealing your desire making you desire them because <laughs> after you go home or after this person goes home you um you touch yourself okay you have a little play is what I'm actually seeing here um and this person basically starts living in your head rent free <laughs> that's something that's coming through here very strongly vice versa as well you could both be doing this so my phone's going off in 222 as i look at the time because i had to restart the camera because i've got a 30 minute limit here with my camera um so yeah like counterpart kind of energy here you guys manifesting each other in through like sex magic here so you try to keep your cool when it comes to this connection but Feelings start to take hold here. And, hmm. Again, more indications for those of you where someone is taken here, there are more indications with this page of wands here and this journey card that there needs to be a disconnect from something or someone before you guys can take this further. Because there is the potential of taking this further, but I think for you guys, you have a choice. For other piles, I think some some people were meeting their counterparts. Some people were meeting or entering a karmic contract with you guys. This has the ability to be a counterpart, but you do have a choice with this one, I want to say. Part number three. I mean, we all have choice. We all have free will. But I feel with this one, it's most certainly an option for you. Even when this person starts to steal your heart and you start to catch those feelings, this person still remains an option for you. I don't think you're somebody who struggles when it comes to having options. I think you do attract a lot of um, suitors, I want to say, because even if you don't think you are, I'm here to tell you, you're absolutely stunning and gorgeous and wonderful and beautiful and funny and everything else. Or it could be here somebody having to let go or move away from like, toxic energy it could be somebody having to move away from an ex you know bear in mind you know this doesn't have to be um an affair this could be an ex that's hanging around as well so for this to continue for this to go further someone needs to disconnect from something or somebody whether that's some that be a person or whether that be like some kind of vice of some kind so bear in mind on this intimate encounter someone may be distracted could be you could be them and um, it could be like an ex calling and it's like oh my god baby mama baby dad are calling um or it could be like are we gonna have another drink oh i need to have a smoke okay things like that as well right and i'm just gonna end up with pulling a few more bits and bobs oh gosh that, that's not a very good position from there is it when it comes to my stomach <sighs> there we go <laughs> let's hide that okay yeah a few more bits and bobs just to finish off this reading bone structure exciting and adventurous and the thing is with this it is exciting because it's under wraps something very secretive something very se actual about this connection between you and this person and with this queen of wands like she is exciting you take this person on a journey you are not a bore you are humorous you are hot and this encounter is an encounter that ends up being very exciting and very adventurous and i think for a lot of you you're going to end up doing it you're going to end up adventuring into each other bone structure this person may have very good bone structure <laughs> is what i'm going to say for that one um it may even be something you mention. Oh my god, like your cheekbones are so high, your cheekbones are so prominent, you've got beautiful cheekbones. <laughs> first date, yeah, guys, a lot of you are going to do it on the first meeting. You may even hook up to do it. It may be planned, like, hey, we're meeting so that we can do it, right? Because when you turn up, you are a red-blooded human being. You're like, I know what I want, 
and I'm going to get what I want. Okay, rawr. <laughs> I wish I never did the rawr, I just ruined everything with the rawr. Um, but yes, interesting. This will be a first date for you guys. And this came out for part number two as well. Tell me how dirty I am. So yeah, there's definitely going to be talks of um, intimate subjects and taboo subjects. You're definitely going to go there. You're going to go deep down and dirty. And also, um, I did forget to mention as well, this eighth house that's coming out as well does represent SEX. So I really do think there's going to be some, some sex -y stuff going on on this first meeting here for you guys. So I'm going to leave that there, part number three. I really hope you enjoyed the reading. I hope it helps in some way. I hope it relates to you in some way. Please drop a like for this reading if you've made it this far. Helps the video circulate, helps channel grow, helps keep me happy. Also comment down below if you've got anything to say at all and subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified whenever I post a brand new pick a card reading. Beautiful, beautiful part number three. You are amazing. You are gorgeous. You are feminine and beautiful and just absolutely flipping fabulous, even if you're male, okay? Take care of yourselves and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.